Hello and welcome to the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Southwest University. I'm Adrian Ochoa, joined by Rachel Phillips. Rachel, it's uh, officially, we have officially entered double digits of the season, week 10. Where has the time gone? It's, uh, it just Crazy. goes, it just flies on by and it's uh, coming down to the wire for many teams. Some looking to stake their claim on a district title, others who are just looking to secure a playoff spot. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting lineup. We'll begin in District 16A, our game of the week, an east side versus west side showdown between the Eastwood Troopers and the Franklin Cougars. We'll then turn our attention to District 1 5A, Division 1 Del Valle look to remain unbeaten in district play as they squared off against East Letter, while the Bel Air Highlanders took on Horizon. Highlanders hoping to rebound after suffering their first loss of the season last week. Let's get into it. Yeah, the champions of District 16A were crowned last night, that being Pebble Hills, winning their first district championship in school history. But there's still three more spots available. Even the Troopers have a chance at getting at least of a share of that district title if they win out. So these next couple of games, very important for seeding purposes as well. Tonight, Eastwood paid a visit to the west side of town to take on Franklin. Eastwood currently in second place in the district standings, while Franklin's hanging on to that fourth and final spot. It's tonight's game of the week. Franklin Cougars. We're going to get back in the win column after losing to Pebble Hills last week. The Troopers, meanwhile, riding a five-game win streak, peaking at the right time. Franklin right here fumbles it, and uh, we're going the other way. Evan Minhat is going to waste no time to cash in. Nice pickup right here on the keeper. So they're knocking on the door. We're gonna finish it off right here with a handoff to Jake Chaknowski. Nice leap. Yeah. He takes it in. Seven to nothing. Troopers on the board. Then it's Jordan Morales for the Cougars. Nice run right here by Mr. Morales. They would get a field goal out of it. That's what we're gonna show you next. Oh, the botched on the mishandle of the snap, but uh, all that matters is as long as it makes it through the uprights, we're good. Seven to three. Troopers still with the lead here. The handoff to Max Muncia. The Mad Max run. Nice pick up there as he gets pushed out of bounds. Then Minhades with the keeper. Evan Minhades, welcome to End Zone City. Made it 14 to 3. Troopers. Here, check out what happens here on the kickoff return. Morales doing kickoff return duties. As you see there, the score 14 to 3. And it's Jordan Morales. A nice return right here, following his blocks, making moves, busting loose, takes it past the 50 Ooh. before getting knocked out of bounds right there. But just when you thought they had something going, the interception by the troop. That was Christian Munoz with the INT. Troopers fired up. And Minhata is going to go to the air this time, going to drop a dime to Curtis Murillo. Who else? For the Eastwood Troopers. Come sweet, on, Cuz Maria. Sweet, sweet play of the week winner yep. right there. It's 21 to 3. Eastwood. Looked like Eastwood would run away with it, but hold on. Franklin's Shay Smith. Run, Shay run down at the sideline. Franklin gonna get their first touchdown of the game. It's 21 to 10. Eastwood with the lead, but Franklin cutting into it. But in the end, this game belonged to Eastwood as you're gonna take a look. This highlight right here. Well, we had one final highlight to get to. It was uh, Mad Max Mencia there. You caught the tail end of that. You saw the most important part. He crossed made, into he the end zone. made it yeah. into the end zone. That made it 28 to 10. Eastwood and uh, the Troopers go on to win this one by a final score, 55 to 36. Now, normally we would hear from the Troopers. We usually have post-game reaction, but our photographer actually had to get called off due to breaking news. So we don't have any of the uh, post-game sound for you. But uh, a big win for the Troopers, and it's going to next week. The Troopers get East Lake. So if the Troopers win, they'll get at least a share of that District 16A title that they'll share with Pebble Hills. But they got to pull off the dub next week when they uh, host the East Lake Falcons. I feel like we could summarize what, what the Troop would say. They, they do a Trooper clap. Yeah, Trooper clap. Yep. And then they'd say, uh, we did a great job out there. We fought hard in the beginning. And then yeah. at the end, we just started to you know find our passes follow out blocks and in the end a big win for the troop i could be a coach that was a good yeah, answer right? there you go yeah, yeah you right. no no need for post game sound we just got yeah i gotta cover <laughs> next week uh, put me in again coach keep me in, in district one six a over at the sack it was the montwood rams taking on the el dorado aztecs two teams looking to end their seasons on a high note second quarter rams down six quarterback isaiah galvin 
eludes a tackler and then finds Isaiah Claudio for the score to go up by one. Next series, Aztecs quarterback Quincy Estrada passes the ball to Ryan Estrada in the backfield, his brother right there, and he breaks a few tackles and would take it all the way to the house to put El Dorado back on top. Do the Rams have an answer though? Well, Galvin launches a deep pass. The defender gets a hand on it back. It falls oh. into the hands of Jeremiah Steve. Just the way they practice it during the week, I'm sure. Game tied at 27 with the Aztecs on the offense. Once again, Estrada looks and finds Evan Garcia wide open down the middle to put the Aztecs up once again. Aztecs back on the offensive again. And here using the trickery, Estrada to Estrada. Then he launches the pass to Eddie Lujan for the touchdown to give the Aztecs a 41-27 lead. And they'd actually go on to win it 62-34. Big statement win there by the Aztecs. Moving on in the earlier afternoon game at the SAC in District 16A it was the Coronado Thunderbirds taking on the Socorro Bulldogs. First drive of the game, Owen Levesky just makes it look easy with the pitch and catch to Cade Little for six. Coro has yet to win this season in that fumble. Are the Bulldogs, as you saw right there, will not help. The ball in his hands again. Levesky, what do you think he's going to do from the gun? Drops back and hits Blake Randeg to turn up the pressure. Coronado piling it on, and the Bulldogs take another L on the season as the Coronado Thunderbirds win their first game in district play, 35-0. to nil. The final that the Bulldogs' seventh game this season where they've been held scoreless. In their games. Turning now to, dish, to Division 5A action out in Horizon where the Scorpions were rocking the H. Bel Air saw its first loss of the season last week while Horizon has yet to see the win column. Highlanders start fast going to the run. Noah Moreno fakes it to the halfback then calls his own number and flies down the field for the tutty to start the party. Scorpions had no intention of backing down though. Still in the first quarter and driving, Horizon's Oliver Appa from the gun hits Ezekiel Bonilla on a crossing pattern but gets stopped on the two yard line. Next play, Appa seeing a crack in the defensive line, picks up his lunch pail, lowers his head and smashes his way into the end zone to tie it up. But uh, yeah, in the end, I, 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 it was all Bel Air. They win it 69 to seven. That's really the only touchdown Horizon scored all game. Uh, Bel Air now moved to eight and one on the season. Good bounce back for the Highlanders after falling to Parkland last week. Well, second place in district standings, speaking of Parkland Matadors, headed out to the Kingdom to take on the Hanks Knights. Two minutes left in the first half. Hanks down 21 already and looking to get on the board, but Parkland has no chill whatsoever as Alberto Zubia gets his big paw on the Knights QB, bringing him down for the sack. Knights would recover and get a first down. 30 seconds left in the half. It's thrown up for Eric Forkdahl. He can't come down with it. Fourth down now, and Forkdahl gets another chance, but Aiden Canada was having none of it there. These two were battling all game. Knights just didn't have enough, though, in this one as the Parkland Matadors win it by a final score of 49-7. to Good, Another good win there for those Matadors. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, everyone right now in District 15A Division 1 is looking up at the Del Valle Conquistadores. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Conquistadores, seven wins on the season, the perfect 3-0 record in district play. Could they stay on the top of the mountain after the Isleta Indians paid a visit to Conquest Stadium tonight? Let's go ahead and find out. Here we go. The Indians coming off a win against Horizon last week, but Del Valle with the fast start. Quarterback Jesse Ramos sets up his pass to Matt Lopez and takes it all the way to the red zone here. Nice run by Mr. Lopez. Few plays later, the handoff to Shelton Fuller. He's going to get the house call. Novaya on the board. Then next possession, Ramos. Going to go down the middle here and connect once again with his main man, Lopez, for the touchdown to take the two-score lead. But Isleta, to the Indians' credit, not backing down here. They, they would find themselves in the red zone coming up here. The pass from Evan Martinez to Daniel Martinez. The Martinez-Martinez connection takes it in for the touchdown. But this game belonged to the Conquistadores as Del Valle wins it 57-21 to the final. They remain undefeated in district play. But Rachel, next week, big-time matchup against the Belair Highlanders. Of course, Bel Air has the one loss on their record, and that was at the hands of Parkland. So we'll see what happens in the Del Valle Bel Air matchup. Parkland, meanwhile, if they get another win, we could have possibly a three-way tie for a district yes. title, depending on what happens in that Bel Air. This is Del where it all game. starts to get fun, folks. Oh, yeah. The 
Simple for Del Valle. They win next week against Valair District yeah. Champions. Outright. You say simple, though. It's a win. They got to go out there and win it. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. But yeah. tough, tough game, though, for the Highlanders coming up against the Conquistadores. Let's go ahead and uh, we're just getting started here on the Borderland Blitz. After the break, we're going to focus in on the matchups from District 15A Division 2, starting with that El Paso game as the Tigers hosted Chapin tonight. Then we'll move on to those Canotillo Eagles. They were looking to remain undefeated in district play as they paid a visit to Jefferson tonight. And then we'll turn our attention to District 14A Division 1, where Bowie was also looking to remain perfect in district play as they took on the Austin Panthers. Stay with us. We'll be right back after the break. We have a choice, and it's simple. Do we want a country where extremist politicians strip away women's rights, put our democracy in danger, and serve their party leaders before us? If the answer is no, and you want to protect our freedoms, put people, not parties, first, and build an economy for everyone, then join me. Let's show them who New Mexico is. I'm Gabe Vasquez, and I approve this message. A good education is key for every child, and ESC 19 Head Start is the best place for children to begin. Head Start is El Paso's premier preschool program for expectant mothers and children from birth to four years old. Our full range of services support early learning and development in high-quality educational environments. We also help parents with their educational and career goals with classes, training, and community resources. Call or visit us online to register today. News doesn't stop on weekends, and neither does ABC7. Whether you're an early riser or like to sleep in, ABC7 has more choices than ever to start your Saturday right. Good Morning El Paso is on from 6 to 7. It's GMA weekend from 7 to 8. Good Morning El Paso is back from 8 to 9. Then GMA again from 9 to 10. For weather, traffic, sports, and complete coverage of breaking news, it's Good Morning El Paso and GMA. Saturday mornings from 6 to 10. Sweet, sweet sounds bringing us back in. East Lake, uh, I just want to say real quick uh, for the marching bands out there, if you were out to some of the games and you noticed the marching bands weren't out there, it's because some of them qualified for the area round of their competition, so they're headed out to Odessa actually to compete. Oh, oh very cool. So okay, I want to congratulate. Yeah. Want to congratulate those bands who made it out to area. Hopefully, punch their ticket to state. I know you were in the band. Could you do anything like they were just doing? Were you that? Uh, that's why I was in the drum line. I didn't necessarily have to dance as much. You saw like the band doing like the little dance moves. Uh, so I you're just saying you have no rhythm. I'll. Uh, yeah, and you wouldn't think, right? <laughs> a drummer would have to have No, I would think Adrian Ochoa rhythm. They're just two words that are synonymous with each other. Yeah, I guess when it comes to drumming, sure, but like dance moves, this is not in the cards. That's okay, I'm not a dancer <laughs> either. Let's turn back to football, though. Who wants to know if we can dance? Uh, District 5A2, both Chapin and El Paso are 2-1 and one in district play, which means tonight's game was all about who wanted the better shot at the number two seeding in playoffs mall. The El Paso Tigers hosting the Chapin Huskies at RR Jones Stadium. Name me a better backdrop for high school football than this. There isn't one. No, no exactly. Right. I don't think the Tiger was up for it, though. Sleeping cat alert, folks. And look, he wasn't the only Tiger sleeping out there. Huskies QB, Davian Singleton with the handoff and takes the late hit while Brandon Ortega catches some Tigers napping as he takes it all the way to the house. And the cheerleaders were vibing. Everybody do the Husky Ruffle! Everybody do the Husky Ruffle! Everybody! Ruffle! Gotta love the cheerleaders. Yeah, yeah, I know we shouldn't have favorites, but the Husky cheerleaders are inching up there. And the team was rumbling as a whole. Jerry Chavez picked off here. Huskies ball. And uh, moon. If you've ever watched Love Island UK, you, you'll get the reference. If not, this is awkward for me. <laughs> Off the back of the interception, Huskies uh, work it downfield. 
And watch the speed from Singleton there. The freshman with a cruisy run into the end zone to make it 14 to nil. He's got ice in his veins, which probably meant he probably wasn't feeling the cold like old Blitzy was. Lorenzo taking being Blitzy's guardian to a whole new level here, while the Tigers were taking their game up a level. Chidas rolls left before he puts up the spiral, and Tigers are back in it just like that, but uh, not for long because of the final score. Chapin win it 42 to 6. Well, the Canotillo Eagles have been soaring in district play. A perfect 3-0 entering today. They were on a four-game win streak entering tonight's game against Jefferson. Let's go ahead and head on over to La Jeff. Silver Foxes still looking for their first district win. They were 0-3. Now, on Jefferson's first drive of the game, this is what happens here. Defense, the name of the game for the Eagles because Canotillo's Chris Brock with the INT. I bet he loses it, but no worries. He falls back on top of it there. The handoff here to the Stanford commit, LJ Martin, and run, LJ run. This is what Stanford has to look forward to come Saturday's next season is LJ with the nice pickup. They're going to go ahead and cash in right here. Jeremiah, no Jeremiah Knox with the quarterback keeper. Punch it, count it. Eagles up six to nothing. But look what happens right here. They're going to go for two. And the pass right here is picked off Ooh. by Jefferson's Roman Gomez. And we are going the other way. How are you doing, Mr. Gomez? He takes it all the way for two. It's only good for two points, all of that, but hey, still. Hey, better than zero points, you know? Shout out to these gentlemen right here. They're saying they're fans of the Blitz. They were asking for Blitzy. I'm telling her it's, he, he stays with Rachel all the time. It's six to two, Gano Thiel. Still, defense the name of the game right here. Jefferson loses the pick skin. Ganotillo recovers. They march down the field knocking on the door, but they can't handle it too as we got a scramble for the ball as well. And Jefferson going to fall on top of it. They couldn't make anything happen on the drive, so they're going to punt. And look, look what happens here on the punt. It's blocked. Ooh. In the end zone, so you pick it up, and it's a touchdown. Oh, my God, my, my friends. And there you see it, Jesus Carrillo with the touchdown for the Eagles after the blocked punt. And I, I love this, Rachel. It's the wave of love. We show it every time there's there's a Jefferson game. Everybody gathering to wave at the, uh, the kids over at the Children's Hospital. Uh, just an awesome thing, the wave of love. Uh, I was told to send this message to Blitzy. Oh. Oh, yeah, the Jefferson Silver Fox. Kisses big love. Fan. I like that mascot, big too. That's a pretty one. It's a few and far between. You see again with deal right there. They improved to 4-0 in district play 51 to 8 the final can of deal continues to roll yeah and they got el paso high next week so uh <laughs> could be an interesting one that one well our final game in district 15a division 2 takes us to the northeast side of town the andrus eagles hosting the burgess mustangs andrus two and one in district play burgess zero and three entering the day andrus was in fourth place of the district standings it was all the eagles tonight who were up 28 to nothing in the first quarter to start off a dominating night the eagles uh you know run it in for a touchdown right here uh, and it was just kind of non-stop from there the Mustangs tried uh, to make something happen but the Eagles defense uh, just too big too strong in that one well, let's turn now to uh, district 1 for a division one the leader of the pack the Riverside Rangers are on a bye week uh, so it was a chance for other teams to get closer to the Rangers and contend for a district title the Bowie Bears have uh, been solid in district play. A perfect 2-0. A win for them against Austin tonight would set up a matchup with the Rangers next week for the district title. But first things first, yeah. the Bears had to take care of business against another district rival, the Austin Panthers. And I know what you're thinking uh, from these two shots. Are we back at El Paso High despite this man's nice tiger-like jacket? jacket. I don't know about nice. We're actually a buoy. Austin up 21 to nil. And all three of those touchdowns coming from this guy, Jaden Wilson, running them in. And I guess he got a little bored running because watch this. Wilson giving the ball and he lofts up a picture perfect toss to Sebastian Morales. And just like that, Austin got up 28 nil. And thankfully, because all the cheering was the only thing keeping the Austin cheerleaders warm, me and Bitsy, on the other hand, as unbiased supporters who can't cheer for teams, were just straight up cold. The Bears now with a mammoth mountain to climb, and oh man, errors like that are not gonna make it easy. Uh, this guy was pretty unamused by it all. Hey, hey mate, watch out, there's something green and spooky behind you. Second half now, the cheerleaders came to their senses and put on jackets, while the Panthers were just still cruising. Wilson not even on the field for this drive, so instead they handed off to another big running man in Jacob Marufo, and he burst his way in for the score. Austin win it 35 to seven. Can't sleep on those Panthers at all as they're in contention, obviously, too, for a playoff spot as well. 
Well, over at Urban High School, two teams that were winless in district play, the San Eli Eagles. Taking on the Urban Rockets, it was a tight affair between the two as Urban was up at halftime. But to start the half with a fumble, the Eagles took the ball back. San Eli, uh, well, they would uh, try and make something happen here. The handoff to the fullback to take it in for a touchdown, but that was not enough in the end to catch the Urban Rockets. They get it done 22 to 12 over San Eli. Going to turn our attention now to District 1-4-A Division 2 rivalry game between the Fabens, Wildcats, and the Clint Lions. And then Monahans paid a visit to the borderland as they took on the Mountain View Lobos, and uh, Jason was out at that game. Yes, Adrian, the Lower Valley battle ended up being quite a bit lopsided in favor of the Lions early on. Clint was already up 24-7 against the Wildcats by halftime, and things weren't looking to get any better for the Fabens. Wildcats, Clint decided to pound the rock on the Wildcats all night. Such as this nice run from Kevin Casada right here. He picked up a pretty good chunk of yardage. Seemed to be working well for Clint. They hand it off again. This time to fullback Diego Cordoba for the touchdown. Now the Wildcats later try to capitalize on this. Oh, here we go. This terrible punt by Clint. There we go. Look at that. Just right to the ground. <laughs> Anyways, they. Uh, the Wildcats do score a touchdown, but they get the extra point blocked, and Clint wins either way, 44 to 13. Now Monahans, we go over to Mon uh, Montana Vista, where the Mon where Monahans came in from out of town tonight. It was a Lobo eat Lobo kind of night at Mountain View. I'm gonna tell you what, unfortunately for them, the Monahans Lobos did all the eating tonight. This game was an absolute bloodbath. Mountain View Lobos were already being shut out, 54 zip at halftime. To make matters worse, the second half kickoff was received by Monahans. And now Monahan just continued to tear those Lobos apart, running and passing all over them. Quick touchdown puts up Ma uh, Monahan 61 0. Mountain View just had no hope for a comeback, and these Lobos will walk away with a 75 14 blowout loss. Hey, at least they got some points on the board. Come on now. Monahan's is no joke. They are the leader of the pack of that District 1 4A Division 2. So, uh, a tough test when you, uh, you have to play a team like Monahan's, absolutely. But, uh, Jason, we'll catch up with you for the borderline the, the blitz picks coming absolutely. up absolutely we'll see jason in just a bit one other score to get to was over in anthony as the anthony wildcats hosted the reagan county owls and uh it was the owls getting the win tonight over anthony 34 to 6 the final and uh time now for war of the week the chafin yeah. husky is gonna do it in back-to-back -back weeks oh really but i didn't realize that. i know that. i didn't realize that till i was out there i was like oh man but i was like oh this hey. could be a fun test could they get back-to-back -back wins because last week it was the best war of the week i'd ever seen so i was like all right this will be interesting let's see how they go up against the tigers lorenzo labor was back to host this one Hey, hey, I am back. Week 10 of the regular high school football season, and what a place to be back. I'm here at arguably the most beautiful high school football stadium in the whole nation. I'm here at El Paso High School, and that's exactly who I have. I have the El Paso High School Tigers. Let's hear you guys. Come on. Wow, you can hear the energy already, and the Chapin Huskies. Come on, guys. Oh, man, these two teams are ready for the war of the week, and so am I. All right. Here we go in three, two, one, let's go. Oh, it's oh, it's even, it's even. El Paso High is taking a little bit of advantage. They're still, they're still fighting, it is still even. The rope has not moved, it has not moved, it still hasn't moved. Come on guys, you guys can get it. El Paso High is pulling in a little bit more. El Paso High is almost there, almost there, almost there. And El Paso High takes this week's War of the Week. Wow, what a war of the week, Rach. I think that was a little better than last week's, but I don't know. All right, let's see how this one shapes up. Again, I'm at El Paso High School. Borderland Blitz, war of the week. <laughs> I, I like that, that Yeah, yeah. The, the, the tongue sticker. I, I would have done the same if I was still in high school. It's fun, you know, you see a camera, why not? Uh, big shout out to Hillary Florence's daughter. She's actually a cheerleader with the El Paso oh, okay. Tigers. She said to me before, I'm a little nervous, and I was like, oh, okay, I didn't, at this point, I didn't know who she was. And at the end, I'm like, why are you nervous? Your mom's a natural on TV. You're a natural too, come on now. Congrats to those Tigers. Uh, two really good World Weeks back to yeah, back. Awesome. To, and both with the Chapin Huskies. Uh, could, awesome. be, could be something to do with the Huskies. I, <laughs> I told them tonight, I was like, girls, you are becoming one of my favorite cheer teams I've, I've ever had the pleasure of hanging out with. They were a good time.
Well, we've got plenty more to come. Again, we mentioned with Jason, the, the Blitz picks are coming. Then we're going to go ahead and recap the scores from New Mexico. A lot of big games going on over in the land of enchantment. We'll recap those games. And again, Blitz picks coming up. Who's going to win that $50 gift card? This is the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder and Rogue. With a range of drive modes and intelligent off-road technology, you can take a Sunday stroll in the least basic of places. The 2022 Nissan family of SUVs. Anything but basic. Now get no payments for 90 days on Rogue with best-in-class fuel economy among gas engines. This is Dennis Barnes from UTEP Football. Minor fans, we need you in the Sun Bowl for our homecoming game versus Middle Tennessee on Saturday, October 29th. The kickoff is at 7 p.m. You can win up to $1,000 every time the Miners score with the Speaking Rock Cast giveaway. The game is sponsored by Los Palmas del Sol. And don't forget to visit the free Speaking Rock pregame party zone before the game. Rise up, 915. For tickets, go to utepminers.com or call 747-UTEP. Go Miners. In 1972, Reyes and Reyes Law Firm began its fight for El Pasoan Social Security Disability Benefits. We've helped thousands of families when illness or injury has prevented them from working. For the past 50 years, our family has been fighting and winning Social Security Disability cases. We will continue to help our community get all the benefits they deserve. Let our family help your family. To make sure you receive all your Social Security benefits, call the Reyes and Reyes Law Firm at 533-9718 right now. Sesame Street. Yeah. Love that. I love the trash can. One. I know. Because I, I saw the rest of them. They're like, just wait till you see our friend. I was like, okay. And then she walked up. I was like, yeah, you win. <laughs> that was the best outfit for sure. It was pretty cool. I like that they all did a cohesion uh, costume for Halloween. It's fun. Friday Night Lights on Halloween weekend. Can't beat that. Everybody yeah, in the costumes. I feel like we, we should have dressed up, Adrian. We should have, like, yeah. We miss, we miss that chance next year, maybe. maybe yeah, next yeah. season. Yeah. Well, hey, let's uh, get you caught up on a couple of scores. The uh, Centennial Hawks were facing the Las Cruces Bulldogs in a Las Cruces showdown, and the Hawks win it 35-14, to 14, which in turn means they are now district champs at this game, the last game of their regular season. Playoffs begin next week. 5-0 uh, and o Hawks in district play. Pretty impressive effort from them, and they were our Sweet Play of the Week winners as well, so congrats to them. A big week for them. We'll show you that play coming up in our next segment what with those Centennial Hawks. What do you think's cool? Uh, getting district champs or Sweet Play of the Week? District champs. You oh, can't come beat on, that. I Adrian. think if we ask Coach Aaron Ocampo, it's going to be district champs. So that Again, know. Let's go ahead and think like me delivering cupcakes is pretty, <laughs> pretty dang good in my opinion. Uh, meantime, Gazden was in Deming tonight, and this one meant a lot for the Gazden Panthers because they were gunning for their first district title since 1972. Unfortunately, the Deming Wildcats spoiled the party tonight as Deming takes down Gazden 29 to 12. Deming wins the district championship, but Gazden. Their credit, they're still headed to the playoffs for the first time in a long time, so congratulations to those Panthers. Yeah, and that scoreboard was accidentally switched around, but, but Deming, oh. Deming got the win there. Okay, yeah, yeah well, <laughs> again, Deming did win that game. I didn't even realize that, but yeah, Deming did win the game. Uh, unfortunately, Gazin comes out on the short end. One final score to get to, if we have it, is the Chaparral santa Teresa game. We can take that score. I believe we have a final on that one as well. No, we don't have a final. We'll, uh, we'll have it on our recap boards at the end of, of the show. I'm sure we did plug them in on there but uh let's go ahead and turn now to jason for our blitz pick winner jason what's going on hey you know what time it is it's time for one of you guys to win a 50 dollars visa gift card for the pictures that you submit on our website at kvia.com so let's take a look at what we got today we will start off with this east lake falcon uh mascot versus pebble hill submitted by uh joanna dyson thank you very much joanna for your submission the falcon Falcons Look at this, a, a Cheetos costume Ooh. on Halloween. If, with Blitzy. Uh, with Blitzy of all people. That's I think, cool. I, think I prefer uh, Takis over Cheetos, but you know, I, you know, you, you do. Uh, you. That's fair. Uh, so, so they're not winning then if, if he likes Takis <laughs> over Cheetos. This one's uh, by Chris Rojas, and this is at the uh, the Chapin game. We have nice. this one of El Paso High School Stadium, very beautiful classic stadium uh, from Jim Whit, uh, Whitlatch. I believe I said that correctly. Thank you very much, Jim, for your submission on that one. We have oh, this one wow. from Paul Oliver Blitzy. 
trying out a uh, pretty fancy uh, DSLR there with that uh, yeah. telephoto lens. I mean, teaching him how to use a camera, that's next level stuff right there. Yeah, I want, I want to see the shots that Blitzy took. I, why didn't he upload any, you know? He's you got know, the GoPro, Because he can't win a $50 gift card. It'd be biased, you know? He just knows. That's, he knows how to true. play by the rules. Very true. Next, we've got this one from oh, Ray Navarro. This, we, we, we know you, Ray. You, you posted pretty good pictures on here. I love yeah. the uh, the El Paso star in the background. Oh, this yeah. is from Austin Bowie. Thank you, Ray, as always, for your submissions. Now we've got this one from Jacob Rodriguez, another action shot from that same uh, Bowie game. Very nice uh, action shot right there. So thank you very much, Jacob Rodriguez. I think we're almost through the end here. We've got this one from Pablo Corral, a coach on the sideline at that same game. You can see the uh, the red El Paso star in the background again. So thank you, Pablo. Austin and Bowie was where I was at tonight. I was there. Blitzy yeah. was there. A bunch of the photos are coming from there. <laughs> yeah, of course. And uh, you know what? This one here is from uh, Irvin San Eli. It's of the uh, the cheerleaders. So uh, <laughs> thank, thank you nice. for this one. Pretty I like nice the though. mascot lying down as well as strutting the stuff the rocket, down there. Yeah, know, the rocket, rocket man. He wants to be painted like uh, one of his French girls. Yeah, <laughs> and why not? Hey, look at him. Of course, you could paint him like that. <laughs> Next up, we have Robert Garza with uh, Del Valle. This was on Senior Night, so thank you very much. That's another uh, this is one of my favorite stadiums to go to here as well. The atmosphere is usually pretty intense over there at Del Valle. And the press box food, it's great. Oh, yeah. And then we have this the... one from Senior Night. Same stadium, same high school, Del Valle. So thank you very much, Jessica Garza, for that submission. But you know what? There can only be one winner. And there were some good ones. There were some yeah, very good ones tonight. a lot of good ones this week. I think uh, I think this action shot from uh, Austin Bowie takes the cake. Yeah. So uh, congratulations, Jacob Rodriguez. You are the proud owner of a $50 Visa gift card. Nice. Remember, guys, you can yeah. always, uh, this could be you. You submit your picks to kvia.com slash play. And we'll see you next week. Thank yeah, you very thank much. You. They were some of the best ones we've seen, I think, all season. Yeah. There was a good variety, some funny ones, some mm -hmm. really classic shots. It was, it was a good mix. got two more weeks to submit your photos. We've got the only two more episodes left. But uh, coming up after the break, we're going to go ahead and recap the scores from week 10, then also take a look back at our sweet play of the week winners. That's coming up after the break. Don't wait until 2023 and start your new career today. Enroll now at Southwest University. We offer flexible schedules and short terms for you to finish your degree faster. Apply today and become an essential worker in the nursing, surgical tech, or health admin fields. That's right. We are now accepting applications to become a registered nurse, surgical tech, or healthcare administrator. For more information, call us today at 915-778-4001 or visit us at southwestuniversity.edu. Southwest University makes you happen. This is Dennis Barnes from UTEP Football. Minor fans, we need you in the Sun Bowl for our homecoming game versus Middle Tennessee on Saturday, October 29th. The kickoff is at 7 p.m. You can win up to $1,000 every time the Miners score with the Speaking Rock Cast giveaway. The game is sponsored by Los Palmas del Sol. And don't forget to visit the free Speaking Rock pregame party zone before the game. Rides up, 915. For tickets, go to utepminers.com or call 747-UTEP. Go Miners. Delicious pizza on dough made from scratch daily. New and classic games everyone loves. The post-match celebration. It's all made to be shared. And now for a limited time, get this extremely tasty deal. A large scratch-made extreme pepperoni pizza, just $15.49. Peter Piper Pizza, pizza made fresh, families made happy. Go ahead and recap the game from last night. A very windy and cold day at the sack last night when uh, it was East Lake taking on Pebble Hills. A win for Pebble Hills would give them a district championship in District 16A. And you see right here, East Lake would be the first to get on the board with that quarterback keeper. But uh, that would be one of the only highlights for the Falcons in this one as Pebble Hills going to answer right back. The handoff to Jacob Ledesma right here. And uh, Jacob Ledesma, welcome to End Zone City. Celebration time for Pebble Hills because the Spartans won their first ever district championship in school history. You see the final score, 38-14. to 14. Congratulations to those Pebble Hills Spartans. Let's go ahead and take a look now, Rachel, at the sweet play of the week winner from week nine. And that, was, that went to... The Centennial Hawks. And uh, here's the play 
that got it done, Rachel. Want to recap it that Yeah, one? Daniel Hernandez to Jordan Lucas, who stays on one foot and just takes it into the end zone. A very impressive play. They got the cupcakes from Albertsons. But uh, great play there okay. from week nine. You see the cupcakes happening here, but it's all about week 10 right now. Let's recap those scores for you in full. Yeah, beginning with our, our game of the week that we showed you earlier, Eastwood knocks down, knocks off Franklin 55 to 36. Coronado over Socorro 35 to nil. Eldorado gets the win over Montwood 62 to 34. Valair winners over Horizon 69 to seven. Parkland over Hanks 49 to seven. And Del Valle gets the dub over Eastwood 57 to 21. Then you've got uh, Chapin getting the win, Canatio, Andrus, Austin, Irvin, and Clint all win it from tonight as well. And the Cathedral, Savio, that game will be played tomorrow. Meantime, Monaghan's, Reagan County, Alpine, Tornillo forfeited that game, so Alpine wins that one. Buena Vista over Van Horn and Centennial over Las Cruces. Again, those Hawks for champions. And then uh, Deming getting the win, Santa Teresa over Chaparral. That game we didn't have early for you, 48 to nil, the final score in that one. Pebble Hills also winning, as we just showed you, and Alamogordo over Albert Mountain, 7 to 3. Week 10, double digits, we're done. Week 10 in the books. We've got one more game tomorrow, actually. Mayfield Artesia over at the Field of Dreams. So that game needs to be played to wrap up the week. But uh, we are headed now to week 11, the final week of the regular season here in Texas. In time over in New Mexico, those schools are going to start playoffs. Yeah, that's it for us here. We'll uh, hopefully see you back next Friday for some more fun, more football, more action. Have a great night.